Einstein got a lot of stuff right. You know, relativity, blah, 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 the nature of the universe, etc., etc., etc. We get it, okay? Einstein was kind of a smart guy. But he got a couple things wrong, too. But in his, this is how smart he was. In his wrongness, he was still able to advance the field. And there's two examples that I want to talk about. I'll talk about one this week and one next week. The first one is something big. Not something like a big deal, but something large. I'm talking about the whole entire universe. That's right. Einstein got something wrong about the whole entire universe. But as we'll see, it's kind of hard to blame him. So story goes like this. Einstein develops the th his theory of general relativity. It's amazing, okay? It can uh, predict the bending of the of light around the sun. It can predict the orbit of Mercury, uh, the gravitational redshift of light. It's it's amazing. It is, and still is, over 100 years later, our theory of how gravity works. Big deal. This is massive machine for understanding gravity, and it's awesome. Well, general relativity is a story of gravity. It talks about the relationships between stuff, uh, matter, energy, radiation, and anything, and the bending of space-time. And then the bending of space-time tells that stuff how to behave, how to move around and get across the universe. This is a general framework that can be applied to a massive variety of situations, including the whole entire universe, because the whole entire universe is made of stuff. And you can use what the universe is made of to predict how the universe will behave, how it will evolve with time, and then use that to figure out how this stuff will will do in the universe. <laughs> Running out of words are hard sometimes, okay? Anyway. So Einstein, in like 1917, he's got general relativity. He starts applying it to the whole entire universe, and he's like, wait, hold up. As far as I can tell, the universe, according to the equations of general relativity, the universe is not static. The universe must be in motion. The universe is, is unstable. And according to Einstein, what he found was that the universe tended to collapse from all the stuff inside of it. Now, up until then, in 1917, as far as we knew, the universe was static. That the universe was unchanging with time. It did not evolve with time. It simply was the universe. And so Einstein's like, oh man, my equations are a little bit off. It's predicting a changing universe, but everything we know says the universe is static. So he's going to, he added a term. And now the equations of general relativity allowed him to add some extra stuff. They had a little bit of flexibility in them. And he used that flexibility to introduce what he called the cosmological constant. It was just a number, just, just stuck in there, which was totally cool, totally kosher with the equations of general relativity but up until then hadn't really been needed. It wasn't necessary. But now Einstein thought he had, he's like, okay, I get it. I have to put this in. The universe is static. The equations without the cosmological constant say the universe is, is moving, is dynamic. But I know that's not the case. So in order to make a static universe, I'm going to just slip that little guy in and we're all good. Fast forward a few years later and two things happen. One, Edwin Hubble discovers that the universe is not static at all, but it is expanding. And number two, Alexander Friedman, another uh, physicist, discovers that Einstein's application of general relativity to the whole entire universe was a little bit incomplete. There were actually many possible universes that are allowed by those equations. Maybe the universe is expanding. Maybe the universe is contracting. Maybe it's open. Maybe it's flat. Maybe it's closed. There are all these possibilities. And what Einstein picked out was just one possibility allowed by the equations, but not the, the unique choice. There were actually several choices that general relativity allowed. We had to use observations to tell us which one of these universes is accurate, 
which one of these models best describes the actual universe. That's where Hubble's observations comes in. He's saying, look, guys, I think the universe is expanding. In and general relativity, as discovered by Alexander Friedman, does predict, does allow for an expanding universe but you have to get rid of that cosmological constant. It turns out that Einstein, if he had stuck to his guns and worked a little bit further in the math, he could have predicted the existence of a dynamic universe, even the existence of an expanding universe. But he came up a little bit short, wasn't exactly sure what to do, added the cosmological constant, and then went on to other things. He actually moved on to uh, problems in quantum mechanics, which is next week. But he ended up not being necessary. So Einstein called it his greatest blunder because he could have he could have been big, he could have been famous, all right, but he missed the boat on predicting the expanding universe. But in this, only Einstein could achieve this feat. Fast forward 80 years, and we discover that not only is the universe expanding, but that expansion is accelerating. And the best way to describe, we call this dark energy, by the way, the best way, the simplest way to ex describe an accelerating, expanding universe is the introduction of a cosmological constant in our descriptions of the universe using general relativity. So that's like a double <laughs> uh, failure on Einstein's part. One, he thought the universe was static when he could have predicted a, a dynamic universe. So he introduced the cosmological constant. Then he got rid of it. But if he had stuck to his guns there, he said, no, I think a cosmological constant is necessary. Then 80 years later, he would have been vindicated. Sorry, Einstein, you're not going to win them all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next week, I'll talk about Einstein's attempts and a complicated relationship with quantum mechanics and how he got some major things wrong. But that's next week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep these episodes going. Thank you so much for watching.